In this video we're going to complete example 2. It says write the following statements as an algebraic expression without using the multiplication or division symbols. Now as we go through these questions I want you to understand that algebra can be really useful to solve real life problems. But if you can't convert an, a real life problem into an algebraic expression then you won't be able to use it in real life. And that's kind of like what we're doing here. We're taking some really basic statements and we're converting them into an algebraic expression. We'll start with question A. It says the sum of x and 2. And the key word here is sum. What does this word mean? I've attached a PDF to help you with this. It gives a list of words and what operation they represent. So we can see sum here and it represents addition. So this means to add x and 2. We'll write that as x plus 2. Now moving on to question B, we have the word quotient. So we need to check what this word means. Looking at my PDF under division, I can see the word quotient. So this just means that we are dividing. We're going Z divide 7. We'll write that down. So this is going to be Z divided by 7. Remembering that we don't like to use the division symbol, so we'll rewrite it as a fraction Z over 7. Now moving on to question C, which says to subtract 5. Now subtract is something I'm really familiar with. Subtract just means to minus 5. And it's also asking us to triple the value of y. Now to triple means to multiply by 3. So I'm going to take my pronumeral y, I'm going to multiply it by 3, and I'm also going to subtract 5. Now I want to rewrite this because we don't like to use the multiplication symbol. y times 3 can be rewritten as 3y, and then we put our minus 5 at the end of that. Let's now move on to question D. We've got the number 10, which is to be added on. So we're going to plus 10. And we also need to find one third of A. Now, this word of is generally used to mean multiply. Okay, so we're going to go one third times A. Let's do that now. One third times A and we need to add 10. Now I'm just going to segue a little bit here and talk a little bit about fractions. If I have a fraction such as 1 over 3 and I multiply it by a whole number, let's say I multiply it by 5, what do I do? Well, the denominator, the 3, will actually stay the same and you'll end up multiplying the numerator and the whole number of 5. So we would have at the top of our fraction 1 times 5 which will give us 5 over 3. Now we can use that uh, for question D. We can multiply the A by the 1 at the top. So 1 times A would give us 1A at the top of the fraction, and just like before, the denominator of 3 would stay the same. And then of course we need to add our 10. We can actually simplify this a little bit more because we never write 1 in front of a pronumeral. So instead of 1a over 3, we can leave it as a over 3 plus 10. Anyway, that concludes example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.